Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much for bringing us again to this important session. We are asking that you please continue to be with us. We pray that whatever questions we all have, you, the answer and the solution to every need, meet us at our points of needs. In Jesus' name we pray. We have, I have here three questions that bother on the joint account. The first one says, if I practice joint or common account, what will I not be cheated as a woman whose salary is more than the family? The second person asks, operating common purse or keeping money together brings cheating, particularly to the wife. And the church says it is best. How can the wife cope or adjust to this? And the third question, what can one do when you keep joint account with your spouse and there is no pocket money and you need to get petty, petty things like when you need 50 naira to even get common salt that to forgo to buy from the market or 10 naira biscuit or pencil for a child? that you must always ask or wait for your husband, not that you are not working, but he is the chairman. I must endorse every couple before you have access, and if you are given any money, you must return change, and you may need to get some things while he's not around. Please help, because we must not miss heaven because of these little things. I chose to read these questions because what we have there is not common pause, but common abuse. Praise the Lord. Yoruba audience. Yoruba. Say, I'm bad on But say, so good for you. Eh? 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 We become a interpreter pastor. But please, that will be an interpreter who can flow. Please, interpreter who can flow, not the one that will be dragging. The questioner, like I said before, is yeah. actually stating a case of clear abuse of authority. And Let's look at John chapter 13. You are not at all. When I was talking the other time, I talked about the fact that Jesus ran a joint account in the relationship with the other, with his disciples. Yes, Gracie. In John chapter 13, John, I read verse, let's start from verse 27. Let us get out the new And after the soap, Satan entered him into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. And now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spread this unto him. For some of them thought, because Jesus had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Jesus had a common pause. He put Judas in charge of the account. And he made a statement. That thou doest, do it quickly. 
and the interpretation that other disciples had that Jesus was given Judas the freedom to go and do what he had to do that he had told him something before and Judas was going to execute it common pause implies that we will bring everything together and then we are going to divide the let, let me use this illustration now whatever the family has you bring it together it is advised that you use a 70 30 formula what is 70 70% will be devoted to your recurrent expenditures in the family. Every month you spend money for transportation. How much will go into that? The wife will have her own money for transportation. That one it will be sent spent by her the way she wants. The husband too will have his own money also for transportation. They are going to spend money on food. You give an allocation to that one. I believe if we keep strictly to Proverbs 31. Every money that will be spent on all those varieties should be managed by the wife. Go through my, uh, Proverbs 31. You will see clearly that the woman was the manager. She was the financial manager for the family. And then Proverbs 31. Quickly, quickly, Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Look at verse 13. Verse 14. Verse 15. Verse 16. Verse 17. Everything is talking of the business that this woman was doing on behalf of the family. She seeks rule in verse 13. She seeks rule in verse 13. In verse 13, she sucked full wool, wool, wool. Oh, but you know, you must have very verse 13 <laughs> and in verse 14 <laughs> she's like a merchant ship <laughs> and she brought food <laughs> from afar <laughs> she was buying the food <laughs> she was the one in charge of it <laughs> and then in verse 15 <laughs> she was the one giving portions of meat to people in the house. Verse 16, she was the one buying land. She considered a field and buyeth it. Verse 17, she cast her land with strength and strength in her hand. Verse 18, she's the businesswoman there again. Verse 19, she's the industrious woman there. And in verse 20, yes, oh, good, no. she's the one giving money to other people who need, need around them. Oh, no, if you want to to get alaka, like you can want. And you can see that in verse 21, yes, oh, good, no, good. she's the one buying clothes. Oh, no, la, she, what, in my own family, my wife buy clothes for me. You know, I be, me, she's the one that goes to market to buy those. I want to like, go, go, this clothes I'm wearing now, I, I don't know how much it costs. Eh, me, she bought it. That's how it should be. We will lay down the policies. Give the principles. The execution is left to the. I mean, in your business, you are not looking into every detail. In a church, for instance, the pastor is not. Um, you, but your business is not looking for how much they bought the shoe, how much they, the, 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 the chair, how much they bought. There are some things that because there are people in charge they do that one they only give you a, a general report i want to say what i found what she said what that you know john talk about just to you my one my job of money the same thing in the family back on my baby and you can see in verse 22 verse 22 yes uh, oh, oh, okay, you, know, you can see she's the one doing all these things what you're saying is this oh, that's what you're saying is this it is really important for us to recognize that as far as family finances is concerned the budget allocation must be executed directly 
by the woman. What will the man spend money for? Ask every man here. The man wants to buy a car. He wants to buy electronics. He wants to buy a good phone. That's all he's thinking about. That's all. And there's more to life than electronics. There's more to life than car. So there are all these things that the Bible has given us, the outline. You divide up the resources. Now that's 70%, you look into different areas. I've mentioned transportation, I've mentioned uh, food, then there is also going to be some money has to be set aside for accommodation. And then you look at, you are going to pay uh, school fees for children and other things, you divide all those 70% should be able to be allocated to those needs. Out of the remaining 30%, percent uh, you know, uh, uh, by now we assume you have already given out your your tithe and offering that one has been so your tithe has been given completely out of the remaining 30 percent give one 10 percent then one third now goes to your savings as a family. It could be for any reason. Only for any project. you to set something aside. Ten percent. Out of the thirty. will also be given to your relatives and other hangers on. There are people that are looking up to you depending on you for one thing or the other many of you have aged parents it is always good to give something no matter how little to them on a regular basis and the principle is the woman should be the one to give to the husband's relatives and the husband husband should give to the wife's relative so that they see you in the good book of the other family. It is not that the husband will be the only one just giving his own brothers, his own sisters, his own uncle, his own mother, his own relatives from 10 generations down the line. And it not because no, you share it so that by the grace of God the needs are met evenly. And then the last 10% should be given for miscellaneous expenses. In other words, Miscellaneous expense means the money that you, the husband, you divide it into two. The husband can spend it on anything that he wants without anybody checking up. What you discover is that generally you discover at the end of the day. Most women will not spend that miscellaneous. Save it for either the children or any other emergency. That is what the idea of the pocket of the of the joint pocket uh, joint account should be able to handle. I want to make a comment about those of us who are afraid. That our husbands will cheat us. Luckily, those husbands are here. And I believe God that if they have been cheating their wives before, they are going to repent today. And if they choose huh? uh, because I believe they are going to repent today and uh, I want to assure you brothers and sisters the final analysis nobody really can cheat you by the grace of God in your family say amen
the reason is this because sooner or later God will defend your cause. When that man thinks that he's having his way, he's riding rough shot over you. You had the testimony of our mother here. Who prayed to God. And God taught the heart of the husband who is putting shoes in the sitting room. Without even any discussion at all. God spoke to him. And he will be thinking I'm the one that took the decision. Have you not been told that the power behind the throne is in the cradle? That we, the women, by the grace of God, we actually wield a lot of influence. Use your power well. The heart of kings is in the hand of the Lord. And God will touch that man. He will become a wonderful, fantastic husband to you in Jesus' name. This person is asking a question about why do we allow women to teach, to read Bible, to do everything in the church. In fact, the language is very strong, so let me read it. He said, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35 is in the New Testament. And it is not being read in this church except during Bible reading. Wow. That is, women are not permitted to speak in the church. But they do. And they are even given opportunity why some male workers are subject to them. Why? I feel this particular writer is suffering from inferiority complex. Mm-hmm. If there is a church that kept women within the roles we believe biblically is meant for them, that church is deeper life. The reason is because the passage our brother is referring to where Paul told the Corinthian Christians that women should not talk except they ask questions from their husband at home. I won't read it. Because that verse alone or those two verses alone do not explain anything. Except to read the whole chapter and the preceding one. Paul was dealing here with order in the church. So in the Corinthian church. But, to eat the Lord's supper. Everybody would do whatever he liked. He would bring his own food. He would take his own. And there was confusion in the congregation. That was on one hand. The other one is on the, on the concerning uh, the use of gifts. When he was using spiritual gifts. So, so, he rise up, he will speak. He will rise up, he will speak. All these were the confusion that he treated in that chapter alone. And the confusion was that in a church there should be orderliness and correctness and, and look at how we are seated now. You can hear me, I can hear you. There's nobody rising up to disturb us. That was in so in the Corinthian church. And so he now gave an instruction. You women who are making noise in church. Making the noise. If you want to ask any question. Get to him, ask your husband. Don't use the confusion of this other one to say, why is he talking like that? Why is this other one doing like that? When in first in first Timothy, Timothy Kini, Paul now talked to the church through Timothy, Timothy and he gave instruction to Timothy concerning 
this same issue. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Look at it now. now give it, there's no confusion now. Give clear instructions. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. That's alright. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And it's in the church setting. The man and I don't allow the woman to usurp authority over the man. Over the past three days, by the grace of God, we have had women program here. The program was meant for women. Because all the women affair. Naturally. We want the women to teach women. Because it makes more impact. They relate better with one another. The message is conveyed more appropriately. But when there is a man around, he doesn't want a man, a woman to use up authority. All the women who operated here by the grace of God. They were under the authority of the man. It was the pastor that came and gave instruction, do this, do this. I'm, for instance, now, I'm operating under the authority of the pastor. It is the permission to go and minister. And as long as we are under his authority, we are not not usurping the authority of the man. But the beautiful thing about it is there situations where there are just not men. At the time of Deborah, there were just not men. The men were not men. Sorry, oh. no. but that's the Bible. The men cannot go to the market. The men cannot go to the market. The Bible said the streets were empty. No business was taking place. Because the men had run away. And it was a prophetess, Deborah. God now had to raise up. And when God raised out, he went to meet Berak. Berak said, Look, I will not go to this battle. If you don't go with me, do you understand the problem now? Even today. Lord, 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 Lord. church work we want to do uh, some we want to pastor some we want to pastor. sections we want to and do and men will not come away from the uh, office uh, men uh, will uh, not uh, be available for their uh, uh, we are going to use women uh, Lord, oh yes by the grace of God we use women Lord, 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 Lord. because when man is not there Lord, Lord, Lord. women will do the work uh, Lord, Lord. because in the ministry of Jesus Lord, Lord, Lord. you may minister uh, there is no time for us but you go through Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Just let, let's look at just three verses. Uh, just three verses there. Romans chapter 16. In verse 1. Paul said, I commend unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Contraire. Paul is about to say, Rabbi, you are not going to say, Dear Connie, you are not going to say, This sister was leaving Contraire to Rome. Paul gave her a letter. Paul gave her a letter. And he told them, he told them, told them told the Roman church, the sister you see, she she had had been, been, that's in verse 2 now, she had been a socorra of many only, and of myself also. In verse 3, we talk about Priscilla and Aquila, the helpers in Christ Jesus. Priscilla was a lady, and God said, she's my, my helper, my, 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 my,
find the Lord. In verse 6, look at Mary there. I who bestowed much labor on us. So these were women that were working the ministry. Thank God for our women. I say thank God for our women. Thank, women, we thank God for you. You're a fantastic work. And God will keep you in his grace for his, and his mercies in Jesus. My time is up. If there's more time, I'll come back. Let's just pray. Father, we want to appreciate you for what you've done for us. I pray that you'll keep your church and you build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And you help us to be better money managers in our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.